He loves the kids. He loves me outside. Special education is a dynasty. It is sometimes scary. Uh, we don't want to change. And, you know, there's always going to be a reason why this work can't happen. And if you're looking for it, there'll definitely always be a reason why this can't happen. But all of you looked for how it could, and that can move mountains. The sessions that we work through this year were divided into five, five pillars, call them the five Ps, and they're basically based in research around how to move from just students existing together physically in a room to facilitating students to form community and belonging within a space. Because just existing somewhere isn't enough for them, it's not enough for anybody. Do you love among us? How do we make that location meaningful for students with disabilities, for their peers, for their teachers, for their support staff, so that everyone's on the same page? A big misunderstanding around inclusion is that a student with a disability has to leave this space that has worked for them and be assimilated into a space that doesn't work for them and that they're the ones that have to change. And so what was cool here was that the supports and the structures that were in place for the students with disabilities that were outside in a self-contained classroom, they actually didn't abandon those. They brought those into the actual classroom space. We have learned so much that has made a huge difference to the lives of, of individual kids, but also to the experiences of the classrooms. It's not just about the academic skills, it's about the social skills, and that goes both ways. So when we've got kids coming into our specialized service safe spaces, or when we've got kids going out in the classrooms, or in the cafeteria, or in the hallways, what you see is one community. It's, you know, kids from kids all over in any different walk of life are coming together. Like, if you're like fitness guru, the food is so stressful to me. Yeah. Good for you. And can you tell Miss Moore about um, your time in Miss Dinsmore's class? Um, I'm making bread with her. I'm learning uh, how to like clean up the table and to like uh, use the dough and stuff. The shift that you're making is is really significant and it doesn't happen in very many places. So no. it's brave, it's scary, yep. it's a risk, but it yep, sounds like fine. you're creating the infrastructure that's needed for yep. not just you, but also the peers and the staff to make that work. So. Absolutely. Thank you. <sighs> Good job. Thank you. One thing that I've learned about inclusion is that it's not a destination, it's, it's an action and the practicality of how to do this work is, is a really powerful piece of evidence that I saw today in all of your presentations. Is this is what we did, not just how we shifted our thoughts. The things that we do have to match what we say we believe in. That alignment of my identity as a leader and an educator is the most important thing. Sometimes we get hung up in that fear that we don't see all the good that could come out of it. And the flip side of that is they could make friends or they could be out there engaged in meaningful play, not just parallel play. If we allow students with different learning profiles the opportunity to participate, they wow us. It's finding those moments to celebrate all of our students. What you guys shared today was how are we changing the communities to be more accessible to more kids. It is an investment to do that work, but then if you look at the impact of that structure, you did it. No matter who you are, whether we knew you were coming or not, no matter what the profile is, the space for you to belong exists here.